using one of our Canford cases, I'm going to show you how we go about protecting our Swiss movement from hard knocks and shocks. So here's your movement sitting inside the watch case. You can see there's a nice big gap around it. And normally that gap would be filled or the movement will be held in place using a, a plastic movement ring like this. And these things work pretty well, they hold it in place, but what they don't do is protect it in any way from shock. So if you can just listen to this, it's very brittle. And what it means is if, while it's sitting in place holding the movement, if the watch gets a knock, the force of that knock is transferred straight through that brittle plastic and into the movement, which could damage it. So we wanted to protect the movement to make it last longer. Um, if you if you don't get shocks, then obviously your movement's going to be uh, just fine. So we came up with a different type of system. It's very simple and it uses this, which is a stainless steel housing. And that housing actually floats inside the case using a series of elastomers and I'll show you how that works. In the edge of the case here, can you just see that if I move that around? There's a light coloured ring around the inside there. I'll just change the angle a bit. There you go. That ring is an elastomer that's engineered into a slot inside the casing. There's a series of those and what they do is they act a little bit like a shock absorber in a car. I just drop that housing in there and give that a firm squeeze. So that housing is now floating. So now if we get a knock, what happens is as the watch hits the hard surface, the inertia and the weight of this stainless steel housing tries to keep moving, but the elastomer slows that movement down a little bit like the occupants of a car when the wheels of the car are going up and down over bumps. The shock absorbers are helping to protect the occupants from those bumps. It's exactly the same principle. And it means that we can pass a very tough uh, ISO shock rating where we drop the watch a meter onto a hardwood surface, but we also do a much tougher test than that where we smack the watch with, with a three kilo stainless steel mallet on a pendulum. Uh, the watch sits on a a little pedestal on the floor and the, the pendulum hammer comes down and, and smashes it, applying approximately 5000 G. Uh, to, we do it on this face and we do it again on the, uh, on the crystal as well. So once the movement hold is in place, um, we then needed to work out a system of holding it securely so that uh, all of the elastomers are compressed to just the right amount. And we do that by bolting the case back down. So instead of, I'll just remove that just temporarily. Most often on a waterproof watch, you'd have a case back that actually screwed down. By screwing it down, you, do, you can get a very good seal, but it can be a bit hit and miss because whilst you're screwing it, you can destroy the very, very small O-rings uh, which are placed around the edge. So what we've done is we've bolted it down using six different hex bolts, each one set to a specific torque setting. And what that does is two things. It compresses the elastomer by just the right amount so that there's still enough movement left uh, for the shock absorber to do its job. But it also compresses uh, a rubber o-ring seal giving us perfect waterproofing every time. And there's just a couple of the things that we do to make our watches a little bit different. I hope you found this informative. For more information please do visit our website it's elliotbrownwatches.com <laughs>